Hey all, Peyton Marine here with another In the Crosshairs, looking again at this whole Space Marine preview as the Codex is coming out. Uh, so hopefully you can still hear me, I kind of moved the mic a little bit, I'm still in an empty home as I'm in the process of moving. Uh, so the last video had a lot of kind of echo, so I got a little bit of feedback, it sounded like I was kind of far away or um, like I was talking on a phone or something like that. So. Um, hopefully this position you can hear me a little better and the video goes well so um, so I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly there's actually I mean there's some good info here but not a lot of info um, I'm not an ultramarines player but at the same time there's some stuff in here that's like well maybe I, I'll have to every now and again try it out because um, yeah there, there's some definitely some goodness that they gave to the ultramarines and why not they're the poster child right so um, We've got this here, it just kind of talks about like who are they and kind of the background. Um, I'm going to play this video. Um, well, actually, if I if you haven't seen it already, I'm pretty sure you have. Um, but uh, it's a really cool video that just kind of goes over more uh, just kind of background and stuff. Uh, it doesn't go too deep into it, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, then it just goes into there how we've already seen how chapter tactics work, but their codex supplement offers a whole new layer of awesome abilities. Warlord traits, relic, and psychic powers that give them an edge they deserve in the battlefield situation. Let's take a look at some of the perks that come with being one of Gilliman's chosen sons. Um, now, before we go any further real quick, I want to point out this picture. Now, this is pretty huge because um, now we can kind of get a size comparison. Um, uh, we can kind of see already that the the war suit over here is, uh, is one of the... Um, I'm sorry, it's the same size about as the Redemptor Dreadnought, and uh, I mean, there's not really, I guess, a whole lot of difference other than the pilots alive and the armament. Um, I think also we have kind of one of those classic cases of the fact that Games Workshop has said in the past uh, that they make the models first and the rules second and um, i think this is definitely a good example of that because um this the weapon here they're calling an auto cannon and it definitely looks the same as the stubbers um so i myself am probably actually going to switch out those barrels to something that looks more auto cannon ish um i may i you know now i'm sitting here talking i think i actually have a few extra um from the suppressors kit that i'll probably switch out just because uh, just I want something more aesthetically and that I can look at it and remember that, yes, that's an auto cannon. It's not a stubber that has auto cannon profile. So I don't know. That's just me. Uh, maybe it's a weird OCD-ness that I have. I'm not sure. But uh, that's just something I'm going to do because, again, like I just it looks like a stubber to me, even though they're telling me that it's not. It's, it's just hard for me to accept. <laughs> um, but the other thing I'll show or, or point out is the impulsor. Um, it is the size of a repulsor um, and actually it has a little bit of a, a little more hips to it here it's got a little wider back end um, but it appears to be about the same same size um, except this little portion here in the front is a lot thinner than this here so it's um, the repulsor has a bit wider uh, up in the front here so maybe that's kind of to symbolize that it's not as lightly armored or something, so maybe that's got a better toughness. Um, we still haven't seen the stats on this. My guess is maybe it'd be a toughness seven vehicle. Why this is toughness eight, uh, and then maybe with this little extra um, wideness in its hips here is um, like gives it a little bit extra boost or something maybe down the thing. I think actually it's because it's got this flatbed thing in the back. So I mean they got to put the forward propulsion engine somewhere so they put it on the side um i don't know i'm definitely curious the the distance since the repulsors can go 10 i'm assuming the the impulsor will probably move 12 inches and probably be about a toughness seven i'm um, still curious how the wounds can work also curious is uh, some of the things that they posted yesterday with what it can take um they've mentioned that this array can either be this the missile array or you can take a a shield dome. I'm curious what the shield dome bit might look like. Um, but then I'm also, uh, they mentioned a orbital bombardment, like comms array thing. Um, and I'm curious if that is in addition to, kind of like the hunter killer missile was kind of like just an extra in addition and it was like a one shot deal. Because um, the orbital bombardment is a one time thing. 
but is that taking the place of the shield dome? So, you know, if you take that, can you not take one of these arrays or the shield dome? So definitely, I'm very, very curious um, what what this what this is going to have in store for us, really. So, all right. So let's jump down here to the bottom. So let's get into kind of the meat and potatoes here. So obviously, uh, again, they're talking about the Codex Doctrines that we saw yesterday and everything there, but the Scions of Gilliman gives them a boost to the Tactical Doctrine. So when the Tactical Doctrine is active, models with this ability that moved in your movement phase but did not advance or fall back can make attacks with ranged weapons in the following shooting phase as if the unit had remained stationary this turn. So, looking at that again, it is um, attacks with ranged weapons. So, the reason why I like, I was kind of like, well, maybe because right now the rule for the executioner is that it does not move, its main gun gets to shoot twice. So, this here is you still get to move the executioner and you get to shoot twice. Unfortunately, it's only in the tactical area, so it's not like you're going to get uh, the Devastator Doctrine and be able to get that extra AP on top of it. But the fact that you get to shoot it twice still while moving is uh, pretty nice. Um, so then they talk down here with uh, the Ultramarines Librarian because they also kind of showcase some of what the Chief Librarian Tigeris can do um, down below here. So they have the Telepathic Assault, which is a warp charge of 7. If manifested one enemy unit within 24 of the and visible to the Psyker, roll 2d6 and add 2 to the result. And that unit that you've targeted now suffers one mortal wound for each point that goes over or exceeds the highest leadership characteristic of the model. Um, so that's pretty cool. So you're going to roll 2d6. And then you're going to add two to that result, and then whatever the highest leadership is, um, you're going to do that many mortal wounds, which is just insane. So if you have something that, so if you roll double sixes, you know, obviously that's 12, you're going to add two, so you're going to have 14 against something that's like seven or six. I mean, if you do seven, then um, right there, that's seven mortal wounds. Um, that's uh, pretty pretty good <laughs> and then anything with anything lower than that obviously you're just going to keep obviously that's again that example is getting double sixes but um that just can show a, a really good um potential for mortal wounds uh, all right so continuing on then they talk about the sanctic halo uh, this is a relic they've had before i believe um and so again it gives a three plus invulnerable but it also can attempt to deny one psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase in the same manner as a psyker. Uh, and then talks to there's also a large issue of special, large selection of special issue war gear that serve as alternative chapter relics that be given to characters of the Ultramarines or for one of the many successor chapters. So um, then they say check out the Sunwraith pistol. Uh, so this is a, basically a uh, permanently supercharged pistol and then some. So the Sunwraith pistol uh, has a 12-inch range, has two shots, strength 8, minus 3, and does 2 damage. Um, so that's pretty good there. Uh, if you hit both times, I'm, you're having a pretty good chance of making 4 damage out of it. So then we're going to go into an example of the stratagem. So the supplement offers 16 stratagems to choose from. Oh. That was my son dropping one of his toys. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's see here. Where was I? So, 16 stratagems to choose, and they are unique to the Ultramarines. Uh, so, one of the most devastating is the tactical expertise. It may only be usable once per battle, but it can affect the entire army. When used at the right moment, like an Ultramarines commander would, no pressure, it can really be a game changer. So, for two command points... Tactical expertise. Use a stratagem at the start of your movement phase if the tactical doctrine is active. Until the start of the next battle round, we're in resolving an attack made with a rapid fire assault, Ultramarine's army, an unmodified wound roll of a six with the armor penetration characters of that weapon is improved by an additional one for that attack. You can only use a stratagem once per battle. So, uh, with the tactical expertise uh, combat doctrine, you are already um, 
improving your AP for that weapon. And then with this command stratagem, or yeah, this stratagem, you're also getting an additional one. So now you're getting basically an additional two to your AP. So that's pretty cool. So then it just talks uh, down here. Believe it or not, there's loads more in the Codex supplement that haven't yet been covered. Uh, then we have the um, Tyrannic uh, Veterans, or Tyrannic. I don't know how you would say that. It's Tyranids, but Tyran, I guess Tyrannic, because it's pronounced Tyranid, so I don't know why it'd be Tyrannic. I don't know. Tyrant, we'll call it Tyrannic War Veterans. Uh, definitely let me know. I'm definitely not the best at pronouncing all these words that they have. Uh, so the Tyrannic War Veterans or Tyrannic War Veterans are a dedicated unit. Uh, they make a wonderful thematic addition, especially if you have your uh, Chaplain Cassius. Uh, so they have the rule Bane of Tyranids. When resolving an attack made by a Moodle, a Moodle, a model in this unit against Tyranids unit, you can re-roll the hit roll and can re-roll wounds. So they get to re-roll. It doesn't say anything about one, so they're going to re-roll hits and wound rolls uh, against Tyranids. So that's pretty neat. Um, I've never, again, I've never played Ultramarine, so I can't say uh, um, if, I'm not sure like how big this unit is. It looks here like it's uh, four, maybe, it's, my guess is then it's probably about five. There's probably not seen the fifth one, maybe. Um, but I also don't know like, if this only applies to that specific unit, or if this is like something you can kind of apply to your whole army type of thing, potentially. I'm not sure. Um, I'm, my guess here is... Um, I don't know that it would only apply to that dedicated unit, but uh, I'm not sure. All right, uh, then we have that, you know, as we promised, we get to take a look at Chief Librarian Tigurius as he has crossed the Rubicon Primaris and emerged more powerful than ever. So as the uh, befits his new status as a Primaris, uh, he has an improved profile. So there's his profile, um, and then some of his new abilities. Here we have Hood of Hellfire. When a psychic test is taken for this model, you can reroll the result. When a psychic test or deny the witch test is taken for the model, add one to the total. Then uh, Master of Prescience. So at the start of the battle, you can select one friendly Ultramarines unit within six of this model until the end of the battle round. When resolving an attack against that, you subtract one from the hit roll. So uh, kind of a prescience, kind of stronger version again. So, um, and my son looks like he has something he wants to commentate on. What do you got to say, buddy? You got your hand up. Do you want to say something? <laughs> no. Do you still go back and play, or you want to say something? Go ahead and say it. You can't. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, and that's the end of the article there. So, you know what Daddy was talking about, bud? Which Space Marines? Which ones was I talking about? This one, the blue ones. That's right, the blue ones, the Ultramarines. Which ones are your favorite ones? The blue ones. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, that's it there. So, uh, like I said, I may... I, just want to take them out for a spin one time. Uh, it would be probably in a friendly game because, you know, not knowing if I would want to actually commit to Ultramarines at all. Um, especially when my little guy here gets older, I'm sure you're going to be an Ultramarine player. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So maybe, but by then we'll probably be on like, uh, uh, I don't know, edition 15 or something probably. What do you think? What number? Two. Two? Oh, that one already happened. Oh, three. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, I really do like the Scions of Gilliman. It does have some potential for something cool. Um, it is unfortunate that it's not during the Devastator uh, combat doctrine, but it also makes sense because then it would just be very overpowered. So um, I guess with that, I guess I'm going to end this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, Really, for me, I like that. And then the other thing was being able to get this picture of an actual size comparison. I really liked being able to see that. And, uh, what's up? You're being all shy. 
So, um, yeah, so, again, thank you for watching. Again, thank you for bearing with me as... Okay, buddy, what's up? They fight. Yep, they are fighting. They have flags. And they have flags in their hand. Yeah, they have flags in their hand? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. Okay. And they have robots. <laughs> they a robot like you. Yeah. And tanks. And tanks. And these are the blue guys. The white guys are the bad guys. Yeah. Why the bad the boy the white guys are boy boy there? Because they're gonna fight. Oh. <laughs> okay. So again, thank you for watching the video and you know Right now, kind of bearing with the um, interruptions, as I like I said before in the beginning, I am in the process of moving, so we're in a very empty house and uh, very kind of tight spaces with uh, kids kind of running around in and out and stuff like that. So again, I definitely appreciate it. Please, if you haven't already, check out the rest of the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification button. It would be great help and great support to the channel. And then if you have any suggestions or ideas or anything, please drop them in the comments below. I definitely like hearing input in ways I can try to improve um, as I continue to try to grow the channel. And then also, if you haven't already, please also check out the Facebook page. You'll find a link of that in the description on the video here. And with all of that, I'm going to say until next time.